Hi everyone, here I am in the kitchen again. <laughs> Today I have the most requested recipe. So many people want this recipe. So I thought I'd come in here today and show you guys how to make cod au gratin. It's a Newfoundland favorite. And now that the food fishery is open, it's a great way to use up all your fish from last year if you manage to have some left over. Um, so yeah, um, what I did was I took a couple of pounds of cod. Um, reason being is I have to make up a bunch for the freezer for my father-in-law. Shirley, I hope you're watching because you have to learn how to make this. And um, yeah, and then I wanted to make some for ourselves for supper. So I did a little bit of the work already. So what I did was I took some of the cod, all of it actually, and I cut it up into like about an inch size cubes or so. And I laid them all out just like in a regular baking dish like this. Um, this one's going to be for our supper. <laughs> and then I just laid some paper towel on top. It kind of like keeps them clean while you're working, but it also soaks up any excess moisture that is definitely going to be in the fish, especially if it's been frozen. So you definitely, definitely want to do that. And then, so for my father-in-law, um, my stepmother-in-law, I guess you would call her, um, she buys these things, I think at Dominion, I think you can also buy them at Dollarama. They're just little containers, they come with lids. Not a big deal if you don't have a lid, because you can make your own. And um, so yeah, so I filled up these for him. Um, I got about five there for him, and then a couple of extras as well. Um, yeah, and so what I'm going to do now is do the root part, which is the reason I think a lot of people are afraid to make it, because roots can be a little bit difficult. But, you know, if you just kind of watch yourself, you're going to be fine. Um, so I have this. The recipe calls for a quarter cup of butter. I've actually got, I guess, about a third a cup because I do have extra. So what I did was I kind of took the full recipe and then halved it. And that's what we're going to use today. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to put that in my Pan. And this is going to be my first time making roux with this pan and last time we used it it got very very hot So we're going to be careful with that. So into the pan goes the butter and we're going to melt that And yeah, we'll just see how that goes Fish is really 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 good for you. It's great. It's got tons of omega-3s and stuff It's good for your hair your skin your nails your belly. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sure you guys saw my videos the other day. I actually caught my very first codfish. I couldn't believe it. Like, seriously, it was so exciting. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to do with myself. The whole day I was like on this natural high, which was awesome. Let's turn this up a little bit. Yeah, I just love it down there fishing and everybody's down there there's young people there's old people there's kids there's everything and then you know catching the cape and that was something else too <laughs> i got a whole bucket full i could have got like a million buckets full if i wanted to but i didn't want to be greedy <laughs> i actually took that and i uh i put it out in the garden actually i buried it underneath in with my potatoes and stuff. Apparently it's supposed to um, be really good. I remember in our old place, I had um, grew, grown potatoes and I put a load of fish compost in there. Well, they were like the biggest potatoes I'd ever seen, like huge big potatoes came out of and I only grew them in like those little Rubbermaid containers. Like it was really quite amazing. It's kind of cloudy and Kind of yucky here today. It's a perfect day for doing videos. I would use my smaller pan, but I really need a big pan for this because I'm going to um, add quite a bit of milk afterwards. Oh yeah, my butter's just melting down. My butter was really cold. It was in the fridge. So please use real butter again and again and again. Like there's margarine like really like i'm sure it's good for some recipes not very many other than um 
Sometimes I'll add in with my veal butter to make cookies if I want them really soft. But other than that, no. <laughs> Two molecules away from plastic. <laughs> so yeah, I have all my butter. My butter is completely melted now. So I'm going to take uh, the recipe call for a half cup of flour. I'm gonna use again about a third. Um, I'm just gonna sprinkle that out. This is something that you're going to have to work rather quickly with. Um, so you just keep stirring and stirring and what'll happen is you'll get a nice kind of like a smooth paste. I'm gonna turn that down again now that it's going. And uh, yeah, make sure it's nice and smooth because you don't want to have any lumps in there. Kind of like when you're making a gravy. So yeah, so you can see what I've got done there. And all that's gonna do is just thicken it right up. Um, two cups of milk, I'm again using almost three. Um, slowly, slowly add this in, because again, you'll get lumps. And we don't want lumpy roux. <laughs> also helps when you're working too, like little bits of milk will heat up a ton faster than if you just emptied the whole lot in there. This is too really well. That was probably a little bit too much, but we'll just keep stirring. I'm actually going to switch over to my whisk now. If you're using a metal pan, be sure to use um, a rubber coated whisk so that you don't scrape your pan and especially those of you that are using Teflon or anything like that, um, that stuff's really bad for you so you don't want to get any of that in there. And the recipe also calls for whole milk. I, uh, I rarely buy whole milk, so I'm using 2% today. Um, if, you be, if you have whole milk, use it. You can also add a little extra butter. You can put a little cream in with yours if you want to. Um, just see how it goes for you. I always use 2%. But I do tend to use a little extra butter. Butter makes it better. Yeah, just like a gravy, we're going to continue to stir and watch it thicken up. I didn't get to go fishing this weekend. My husband was working, so he's on days. I don't have anyone to take the fish off the line for me. I'm not about to fall overboard trying to catch a fish. I'm sure I wouldn't mind though, <laughs> as long as the water was a little warm. So stir, keep stirring and stirring. My dad actually taught me how to make gravy. On the side of the road in an old camper, it was a bus actually that he had, um, you know, made up into a camper. He was such a brilliant man, like as far as um, making something out of nothing. Like he had very little education. Um, build our house, the electrical, the windows. He could take apart a car. He could <laughs> grow vegetables. He could, I guess I'm kind of like my dad in some ways. I'm like my mom in lots of ways too. But when it comes to the kitchen and the gardening and the drawing and painting and all that stuff from dad my eyes <laughs> one time when you were a kid you'd be like no you look like dad <laughs> god forbid someone say you look like a boy <laughs> today we won't have many interruptions with the dogs and the phones. <laughs> so 
yeah, each time as it starts to thicken a little bit more, you can add a little bit more cream. Make it like a dream. <laughs> Poet didn't know it. <laughs> it's really hard to come up with stuff to say when you're making videos. And then you don't want that whole awkward silence thing on there. <laughs> One of these days when I get my nerve up, I'll do a live video and then I can probably chat while I'm cooking. I find cooking for me really relaxing. A little woolly in there. I picked it out. A little bit of flavor. A lot of people are around here, or, well not even around here, in Newfoundland in general. They're always with the hairnets cooking and stuff. And like if I was making like food for somebody else, um, besides my relatives, <laughs> um, I would definitely wear like, you know, a hairnet or something. But you know, I figure it's a privilege to get one of my hairs in your food. <laughs> So yeah, this is just about ready here now, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. It's starting to thicken up. Now I'm going to add to this um, about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. I, I, I mixed them all up high. <laughs> Jamie Oliver's gonna love me one day. <laughs> so yeah, just keep stirring and adding the ingredients. I hope I don't sneeze with the pepper. <laughs> Almost, I can feel it go right up there that time. <laughs> Please don't sneeze. Now I got something really weird that you're gonna say, what? I have uh, a, a tablespoonful of mustard, real regular, excuse me, no, <laughs> look at the light, <laughs> um, a tablespoonful of mustard, a half a tablespoonful of real mayo, <laughs> and a half a tablespoonful of wine, just wine vinegar. Um, I'm just going to mix those together and I'm going to put them in and you'll see what that does. It has a gorgeous flavor and a really, really pretty color through the roof. See, you want to watch this. If you don't keep stirring and stirring, you're going to get lumps and you really, really don't want lumps. Let's look at the color of this now. It's really pretty. And we're also going to add um, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of fresh lemon zest. That gives a nice little flavor. Um, the other thing with this recipe too, everyone's like, most people boil their fish before they make cata gratin. Seriously, I really, really, really don't understand that because for one, fish takes no time to cook. And for two, like, why would you boil all the flavor and then put it back in? So for me, I'm like, put it in there, Ron. You've got all the flavor in there. And you don't have any water. And it's not diluted. So, so that's come along. And now, um, a small onion. I, I cooked it up earlier. Dice it really small. Um, this is actually two onions because I'm making so much. So that's going to go right in there. It's a little bit of prep work, but it's really, it's not too bad. I'm actually going to turn that right off now. I think the pepper got my nose running a little bit, either that or the steam. And I think we're just about there. Let you have a little peek at what that looks like. So it's kind of 
kind of like the consistency of gravy, really. Um, we're going to um, take all the paper towels off. Uh, the paper towel keeps it uh, clean while you're working and again, it takes the moisture out of the fish. And like I said, if you had it in the freezer, absolutely there's going to be water in the fish and you don't want that in your cut of gratin, so. I actually got quite a bunch here today. Uh, let's see. I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a big one, which <laughs> it's quite a lot. So yeah, so we're gonna take, take some of the roux and we're just going to pour it over the fish. Um, I pick up my frying pan and do this, but it's quite heavy with all the ingredients. So yeah, just a little bit over the top. There's no need to like mix it in or anything like that. Such a gorgeous color. My friend Marion really likes this too. I hope you're watching Marion. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna come down there with her and I'm going to do up a bunch for her freezer so then she's got it there on hand as well for any time she wants to eat it. I actually had to get some fish off of her. We actually went through all of our fish last year and we had like a lot. But when you're making kind of grand and stuff, like, I mean, it's so delicious. You know, you know, you make tons and then before you know it, it's all gone and you gotta make more. And between that now and the deep fried fish and chips and pan fried cod and fish and brews and stewed fish and <laughs> there's so much you can do with cod like such a versatile fish and it's so delicious um a lot of people don't like fish cod in the summer and it's because the water's warmer and the fish does tend to be a little softer than the fall fish um eats lots of capelin too i guess i don't see the problem with it um it still tastes delicious and like for me, like, oh, you can get it, get it, and eat it. I actually cleaned all my fish myself that I cut um, on last week. And um, I took all the fish skins and I cleaned them. And I actually dried them all out. And uh, now I can have them for treats for the dogs. Like, I pay a small fortune for dried cod skins for my dogs. And, if I can make them myself, well, hey, why not? Just want to make sure you have enough on top of each one. This smells delicious already. If guys have any questions or anything, just like leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. And like, this is such a rich, rich dish that like people are like, what am I supposed to have with that? Well, you don't really need anything. Like potatoes would be too much. Um, usually what we do, we'll either have um, just a plain garden salad or um, tonight we're gonna have some garlic bread, so. And who doesn't love garlic bread? <laughs> all that so I'm just going to take my little spoon and kind of make sure it's even ish you can kind of push some of the sauce down through but it's not necessary because when you put it in the oven it's going to bake up quite nicely it's perfect sniff sniff with my nose <laughs> Okay, so that's that part. Now we're going to take um, a call for a cup of sharp cheddar cheese. I brought old cheddar cheese. Actually, I think it's extra old, so we're going to use that. And again, I got almost two cups because 
we're making more. So we're just going to um, sprinkle a little cheese over the top. I had other cheese, but the orange cheese really looks good. So, yay for the dyes and the cheese for today. <laughs> Hi there, never fails. Telephone. I'll have to call them back. Gee, they're going to be good for the freezer for a while. Who knows? I'm not used to making it. I feel like the perfect amount of cheese and everything. <laughs> bit of cheese. Um, it calls for a little bit of dill or savory or whatever you want. Um, I got some lemon dilly from Epicure. I don't sell Epicure. I do know a couple of gorgeous ladies that do sell Epicure <laughs> if you want some. But I actually use tons of it. So yeah, I'm just going to sprinkle a little of that on. And there goes Jesse Rose with her little barky face. <laughs> Lucy! I'm so sorry for the dogs. <laughs> well, no, I'm not sorry. They're my dogs. They bark. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, a little lemon tilly. And then, um, just like some crackers that are crushed. I already went ahead and crushed them. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to take so many of them and just... Crumble them right over the top again. You can mix these with a little melted butter if you need extra crunch, but these crackers that I have, um, they're actually quite buttery to begin with, so I, I don't think it's necessary. And then like once these are done, you can just directly put them right back in the freezer. It doesn't matter that the fish was already fro frozen. I do it lots, like all the time. And it doesn't matter what kind of crackers either. Although if you have saltines or something, probably put a little butter just for the flavor. Like don't worry about the mess, like because Nanny's super messy <laughs> when it comes to cooking, anyway, and coloring hair. <laughs> I remember when I worked in the hair salon, I was salon Fredericks years ago. Um, Fred would say, "You got some mess there, my dear," and I'm like, "Yeah, but it's a creative mess." And luckily, I had someone to clean up after me there. I'm not so lucky these days. <laughs> my husband works lots, so he doesn't clean lots. And that's okay. Um, I'm using just this uh, Parmesan. I couldn't get fresh Parmesan. Normally I would use fresh. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle a little tiny bit on top. And that's it. Like super easy, super delicious, super good. Um, when it's done, I'll try and post a picture. I'll definitely put the recipe in there. Don't forget to sprinkle love on all of them. <laughs> I hope you're having a fantastic day and I hope you learn something. And um, I hope you catch lots of fish. Okay, bye.